This is a reaction, I'm assuming, to the SEC move at the end of last month. What does it actually mean in practical terms? This is really the second bank guy that we're hearing to make such big moves. We heard Citigroup a couple of months ago saying that they would pause new SPAC issuance. And what we know now about Goldman, sources telling Bloomberg Sridhar Natarajan that Goldman will only work with select SPACs when it comes to de spacking finding a merger target so that that SPAC can take a company into public markets easily. But then you also have this slew of SPACs that a lot of questions are surrounding. Are there going to be many more liquidations when you look at the SPAC world, given big, big underwriters like Goldman Sachs and Citigroup are starting to take a step back? What kind of banks that are still in this business that can kind of pick up any slack? Well, one interesting question is what happens with Cantor Fitzgerald and what kind of work will they do around SPACs? Because they were one of the biggest underwriters, one of the top three, and hiring for SPACs as well. This was supposed to be the new model of taking companies public. But with the SEC yep. rules, the worry here is around forward guidance as well as conflict of interest. Will the rules change for any future SPACs as well as any prior SPACs? Will there any be repercussions around the disclosures around them? Shinali, what are the revenue implications? One thing interesting, and Guy, remember, I had just gotten back from Milken, where the SPAC sponsors were roaming free and actively <laughs> looking for deals. And so you had so many SPAC sponsors who had conceded that they had lost some money here. There are costs associated with creating a SPAC and then not being able to fulfill that deal. There are a lot of investors, interestingly here, Guy, who have been doing a lot of SPAC arbitrage. So do investors get their money back quickly as these SPACs start to liquidate? There is uh, some money to be made here in the interim as the SPAC market starts to shake itself out. And in general, I mean, uh, aside from the SPAC market, but I feel like this is all part of big banks just de-risking in general. Like with yes. the big moves that we've seen, the gaps in liquidity, the VAR models every day when they come into the office must be sky high. Yes, a very, very great question because VAR is up significantly and sometimes due to one-off events. The other thing that people are talking about to, to make this a macro question is are people borrowing too much money and taking on too much risk as rates get higher? Mm -hmm. So how much much leverage is there to still pop out of the system. We are hearing from a lot of big banks when they look at their clients they're taking on, the margin loans they're providing, as well as their big asset management businesses, where can they take some risk off the table here?